Hello everyone, hope all is well today. My name is Lamut. The topic of discussion is manipulating numerical vectors with R, that is operations on numerical vectors. Um, I'm going to assume, first of all, that I have some numerical vectors uh, let's, uh, with the same number of components, so that is the same size. Um, one will be called x, the other one is y, and then I'll have a scalar, which is essentially a numerical vector of size 1, with one component. And we will go through a series of examples where we manipulate these vectors by performing some operations like addition, multiplication, division, and, and so on, even applying a log, and, and so on. So we'll go through this example um, with a, a, uh, some uh, real numbers. Okay, And so first of all, I'm going to define my two numerical vectors. Um, one will be called x, the other one y. Uh, the assignment is done with the equal sign. And then c allows me to combine values together to construct a numerical vector. And so if, let's say my first vector is called x, and then I, I put some vectors, uh, assign some vectors to x, uh, some values, sorry. So I have 10, I have 100, I have 2, I have 5, uh, 16. And so here I have a vector of size five. So here, for example, if I use my function length of x, I see that I have five components. I can also define a vector called y of the same length. So instead of using x, I'm going to call it y. And let's say I have one, zero, minus two, one, zero. And then if I compute the length of y, we see that uh, y also has the same number of components of x. And so this means that we can add x with y, we can we multiply them together, we can divide one by the other. So for example, if I do, uh, here I'll display x and I'll display y. So if I do x plus y, these operations are done component-wise. This means component by component. So I get a new vector of the same size where the first component is the addition of the first component of x with the first component of y, so 10 plus 1. And then what is the second component? What is the addition of the two um, components, which are, uh, sorry, the two second components in x and y, so 100 plus 0. Third components are 2 and minus 2, so when I add them together I get 0 and, and, and so on. If I use the star, this is a product. So now I'm multiplying component-wise the values in x and y. So for example, first components are 10 and 1, so the product is 10. Second components are 100 and 0, so the product is 0, and so on. We can also divide one by the other. So if I do x divided by y, I now have the components of x, which are divided by the components of y, component-wise. And so notice that in the second, second component of my division, I have inf. Why is that? So if I display x and y, so what is the second component? Well, it's 100 divided by 0, which is not defined. And R will, will actually call it inf. Okay? Um, now, we can also combine a vector with a scalar. So a scalar is just a vector of, of size 1. So for example, if I define a as 2, this is just a numerical vector. So if I get this length, whoops, not of x, but of a, I get the length of 1. I can ask r, well, is a a vector? So is vector? Yes, so it's true. So it is a vector. Is it numerical? So is it a numeric? And a, um, r answer is true. So a that I display here, which is just a number 2, is a numerical vector, but it's of size 1. So this is called a scalar. And then I can combine the scalar with a vector, so I'll display x again, um, together, in order to get some a new vector. So for example, if I do x plus a, what are we doing? Well, we're just comp taking a scalar 2 and adding to each component of x. Okay, so we're adding a to each component of x. So adding 2 to 10 is 12, 2 to 100 is 102, and, and so on. I can do x minus a, so now we're taking 2 away from each component of x. I can do a product, so this is multiplying a to each component of x, and I can also do a division. So now I'm dividing each component of x by a, which is 2. Okay, So uh, this is the combination of a scalar and a numerical vector to give us a new numerical vector. 
Um, some other operations are the log, the square root. I can do an exponent and absolute value. Okay, so here let's start with the absolute value. So remember y, which is a numerical vector. Um, look, the third component is actually negative. If I compute the absolute value of y, is going to apply the absolute value to each component of y. So uh, absolute value is just taking the sign away, it gives us the positive. So for example, with minus 2, this becomes a 2. Okay, so this is the absolute value. Um, I can compute the log. Uh, let's say I take the log of x. I'll display x first of all and take the log of x. So this is the natural log of each component of x. Natural log of 10, so this is a log of base e. So natural log of 10, natural log of 100, natural log of 2, and, and so on. Um, I can compute the square root, so this is with the function sqrt. So now we have the square root of each component of x. So for example, the second component of x is 100, so in the square root, the second component will be the square root of 100, which is 10. Okay. Um, I can also compute uh, some other powers. For example, if I do x to the power of 4, so now I ha take each component of x and I put it to the power of 4. Okay. So these are some operations on our numerical vectors. Uh, some function, another function that's useful here, so some useful functions. I have the sum of x. We already seen the length of x. So sum of x, you can probably guess, that just, just gives me the sum of the components in my vector x. So x is 10, 100, 2, 5, and 16. So if I compute the sum of x, well, this is just adding up the, the values. So if I verify by hand, so I have 10 plus 100 plus 2 plus 5 plus 16, this should be 103, and yes, it is. Okay? So this is the sum of x. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through an example where we're going to compute the sample variance by using the above operations, so by using addition or multiplication and so on, and verify that it actually gives us the variance as given by the VRR function, which computes the sample variance for a numerical vector. Okay? So let's display x. Now, what is the sample variance? So first of all, we're going to take deviations of x away from the mean, the sample mean. What is the sample mean? Well, this is the mean of x. So the mean of x is 26.6. Now, what is the mean? Well, this is just the sum of the values divided by the number of values. So here I have the sum of x divided by the length of x. This gives me the mean. So I just verified that the mean is, is actually computing uh, the average property. Okay. Now we're going to take each value of x and take away the mean from it. So if I do x minus the mean of x, what are we doing? We're taking each component of x and we're taking the mean away from it. So the first component is x 10, sorry. So I do 10 minus 26.6. Second component is 100. So then I do 100 minus 26.6. Okay. Then when we're computing the sample variance, so first of all, we take the deviations away from the mean, but we take the square deviations away from the mean. So we're going to need to take each one of these differences to the power of 2. So now I have my square deviations away from the mean. Now I want to add these up. So we take the sum. So now I have the sum of the square deviations away from the mean. And then we're going to divide this by n minus 1. So the sample size minus 1. So I divide by the length of x minus 1. And this should be my sample variance. So let's verify VAR of x, which is supposed to compute the sample variance for this numerical vector. So VAR of x, oh, yes indeed, it computes the same value, which is 1711.8. All right, so this is manipulation of numerical vectors with R. So have a good day.